Hey everyone, welcome to Mix Live, episode 19. We're testing out a new time slot today that works better for a few different reasons. One, because I've been splitting my sleep schedule in half so that I could do this show, and it sucks pretty bad, and I forgot to turn off this stupid thing again. God damn it. Anyways, um, it works better for me so that I'm not so exhausted during the show, and uh, so we can actually broaden our kind of viewership so that people... Because I've had a lot of questions from the UK and Australia and all over the place for people that are interested in watching our show live but aren't as able to participate. So we're testing out a new afternoon schedule that maybe hopefully will work better for everybody. And that's our that's my end of my global domination chat. So I just want to make sure that we're covering as much of the globe as humanly possible. Adam and Rick are here with me. We don't have any set other big guidelines today, but we're just going to be chatting that up. Say hey, dudes. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, episode 19 going on here. Uh, 19 hours of content you can watch uh, in the app or on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to that. And then uh, lots of good stuff going on all around. We got stuff in the US going, stuff in Canada, new stuff in the UK. So taking over nice and slowly. Quick shout out to Darren Cole. We got your new line out as chefs this week or last week. They look were super nice. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna order some and, and check them out this week. They look uh, look like a, a lot of bright fruits and probably some uh, healthy applications of WS23. I was suspecting. Darren loves that stuff. And we have our own flavors launching next week from Chess Flavors. Four brand new flavors, all summer themed fruits that. Uh, I think we'll tickle the end of your summer fancy pretty well before uh, we want to get in there before the end of summer. We got like two more months, I guess, with hot weather over there. So should be pretty, pretty good. I also heard some uh, salacious rumors about you guys maybe putting out an actual juice line. For real. So check us out pretty soon at that Mixer Collection. MixerCollection.com. Adam, could you put that shit on the thing? So we haven't yeah, really launched it officially yet, but pretty soon we're gonna be shipping our first our first round of uh, stuff shipping out of the lab like at the end of the month. So start watching for the Canada Canada big Canada launch. So we don't have it's just a soft announcement now. So we're not ready to launch launch, but we're coming soon. Buy my shit so I can buy tacos, right? Except that I don't actually buy tacos very often with it. I usually buy breakfast burritos, which are, I think better. That's that's heresy, man. <laughs> well, I like tacos, man, but I need to get ten of them, right? And I can get one burrito and fill up to the same same amount of effort. I got yeah, the burritos are the poverty taco. That's right, dude. Poverty tacos. <laughs> my my poverty tacos, buddy. Breakfast burritos are three bucks each down here. They're delicious and they're huge. E one on a full collapse, eight hours. Hey, Jennifer's in the chat. Hey, <laughs> Jennifer. He's up in the chat. You guys didn't want to join me in the show. You just wanted to come troll me in the chat, huh? See how it is. See how it is. Oh, I'll give you the link for Darren Cole's stuff. Yeah, Darren sure. Cole's stuff up there. We'll throw our link up there, too. So we'll, Darren Cole just launched, and we'll be launching next week four new flavors of chefs as well. So be on the lookout for them. We're keeping them super secret until we launch because we just want to see what happens, to be honest. It's kind of fun. Um, Watching everybody try to guess at what we're making, so it's going to be pretty exciting. I think it's probably our best, like uh, our best launch so far. So pretty stoked about it. Yeah, my, the flavors, the flavors that I put up are really like, I'd I'd argue my best fruit flavors. It was through like a, I think I made them way back in November, and they just had really good, just like really good flavors comparatively, and then. They, they got slept on big time. So I kind of took them off the grid and then put them through here. And I, they, they, I think they're my best fl fruit flavors I've ever done. Like I got a lot of custards, a lot of tobaccos that I like, but fruit I'm pretty picky on. And these ones are, are two of my favorites. So I think that they're going to do really well in the UK. And I think that people are going to really like them, uh, you know, our, the, one of the best selling flavors over there is called Mango Tango or Tango Mango. I always forget the order, but the thing sells out a lot. Everybody loves it over there. So I think that these fruit flavors will really be 
real popular with everybody. And then uh, Christopher did too that uh, nobody's ever seen. So I, all four of them were hoping to make a splash uh, in the UK with those. Let's see, Darren's line. I'm going to post Darren's line. Uh, they're called Divine Shots and uh, really good. He's got four uh, for summer, and one of them is a Coca-Cola type of thing, uh, which is an interesting one. Uh, so definitely give those a try. And then ours are coming. I think they're coming on Monday, if I was to guess. Mutual Monday. <laughs> yeah, Mutual Monday. Mutual Monday. I hope Lewis is watching. So the <laughs> Mutual Mondays. To uh, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, the two flavors I put up are both really, uh, they're actually outside of my wheelhouse because I normally don't do like like big, bold, ultra sweet fruit stuff. But I did this time because I think that it's something that people in the UK really appreciate, maybe a little more. And, uh, you know, they don't want to vape Jasmine, right? Every time I mention Jasmine or Lavender to Lewis and Carl, they're like, No way. They're like, no way. So it's all right, though. Um, you know, they like what they like, right? So I'm pretty excited about them. I think they're really good flavors, and they're really fun. Fun juice for summer. Maybe I'll make some serious stuff for fall. I'm hoping to release some tobaccos within this fall. Tobaccos are going to be my new thing. Or not my new thing, but they're my fault. Then. Anyways. Uh, there's a the Pixel Chef Fuck Mutual Mondays. There he is. Good morning, Lewis. <laughs> Pixel Chef's here. Right? So Lewis said he was going to come on the show today, but he's super tired because he had to drive all day or something like that. So what, that really means that he's like half tossed in his pajamas and he doesn't want nobody to see how bad his hair looks right now. But that's all right. We love you anyways, Lewis. Thanks for stopping in the chat at least. It's good to see you. Okay. Yeah, so we got, we're talking about the chef's uh, one shot line coming out and then Darren's one shot line with chefs. Both really cool. And then a lot of people like the the labels uh, that are, it's called Hi My Name Is, and some somebody posted a whole line of those. You can get those from chefs too, and it looks like a hello badge uh, that you'd wear. And then something we're trying to do is get a duplicate label with all the one shots that go out uh, with any vendor we work with. Uh, that way, that when you get your one shot, you make the one shot, you can throw that label onto your finished bottle. It's kind of just a small fun thing, but we think people will like it. Uh, let's see. Quick uh, yeah. shout out to Mr. Hardwicks for sending me this sweet ass dot mod, 200 watt box. It's amazing and magical, and uh, I'm super excited about it. And I just wanted to say thank you for the very lovely gift. I'm super excited about it. That's it. And so I'm super. It's it's amazing, man. I've never owned a mod that was worth more than like 40 bucks. Right? Like I always just use like whatever they could put out 40 watts and I was happy with it. Um, you know, I had my sick leave for like three years. And uh, so he sent me this just this week and just two days ago. And I'm super, super, super stoked about it. It's badass. So if you have money, like real money, you should get one. It's pretty are awesome. you vaping and uh, like, what do you, what do you got wrapped? What do you, and then uh, are you using temp control with it? Uh, I was using temp control, but I turned it off for right now because I wanted a little more kick. And I'm still kind of like learning the curve for where I want it, but I just got this big fat single stainless in here. I'll see if I can. And did you you wrap that yourself? Yeah. Well, no, the coil itself I got from Too Tall. He's got like a dude, right? So let's see if uh, let's see if I can get that to show up very well. It's kind of dark, but there you go. One, two, three, four, five. Like eight wraps. Yeah, it's pretty big, so it's. Like three millimeter in a diameter, like super large, like point three ohm ish. Yeah, nice. yeah, point three exactly. But it gives off a lot of flavor. I really like this Pulse RDA. Um, yeah, I, I have the, the Kylan. The Kylan, yeah. How do you like the Kylan? I don't know if it'll show up, but it's it's unusable basically with the smaller tank. There's uh -huh. a because this thing is like, it it eat. I only have a single coil in it, and it eats the juice up uh, quick. Like it, it smoked through a whole tank pretty much. Me just sitting there, 
trying it out for the first time. So it's definitely something you'd want to use the larger tank on. So if you're looking to use a smaller tank, it, this won't really work that way because the way it's designed is uh, this this whole middle wrap metal portion fills up all the space uh, for for the juice to actually sit when you have it smaller. So if you're going to get this tank, I'd say definitely get you know just the second you get it, put on the larger uh, piece to it. But this thing's great for because I wanted to get down to a single coil because I usually just low power double coils. Uh, and this has just been killing. Like I just, I don't have, it took me a while to get used to it because there's like different click wheels on the bottom and stuff. But once, once I got, you know, accustomed with the tank, I definitely recommend it. I think I got it for 35 and being able to jump in and build on it and then not have to worry about it for the rest of the week or so uh, is really what I like. I like to just set it and forget it. And uh, this does it. I'm way too, I, I vape way too much to do the dripping because it's just like every, and then I take big draws too. So it just doesn't work. Yeah, it's called, it's called the Kylan. Um, I can't remember who makes it, but it's, it's definitely a cool tank. It's my favorite tank so far. And I don't, I'm not a big, you know, RDA kind of guy where I have a ton of those. It's like I got 40 on the shelf or something. So my my knowledge is limited, but from the stuff that I've tried out, it's really, really a great tank. So I'd recommend it if anyone's looking. So real quick, Anthony B asked if I'd ever used milk and honey, which I definitely have. It's probably one of my favorite Flavora flavors out of all of those that I've received so far. It's pretty strong, so you can usually get away with using it at 1% or lower. I've never really taken it over 1.5% because it gets kind of a – funky maltiness to it that I didn't find all that pleasant or to work with. It doesn't work with the sweeter tones in its own flavor, right? Like you take it too high. So 1% or lower, it's like a nice sweet cream. It doesn't really taste like honey itself, like literal honey, not to me anyways. Just a kind of really super sweet, uh, heavy cream like you would, uh, um, like a non-eggy custard, I guess, right? So you think like a brown sugar? Because uh, ML Nikon was saying she uses that instead of TPA brown sugar. Uh, I can see it giving off a kind of brown sugar vibe. I personally don't see it replacing brown sugar in flavor, but I do get a kind of like that sort of like brown sugar vibe. And I know on the uh, noted show when they were doing Dolce de Leche, they said that milk and honey was fairly close to like a Dolce de Leche flavor. Do you get that at all? Like a caramel, like a milky caramel? Yeah, I think that's actually, you're, you're probably, you're, yeah, that's more accurate. I haven't baked it in a while, and I, did, I haven't baked the standalone in a few months. Um, I don't have my notes in front of me, and it's really hard for me to keep track sometimes. But yeah, I would say that's pretty accurate, like a kind of caramelish. But I get a kind of a funky multi tone when I go over 1.5%. I'm not sure that everybody picks that up, so it could just be me. But uh, Bizzle Basil is saying he likes it at 2% single flavor a lot, so. Maybe it is. Maybe maybe it's just that one range. Some of the flavors have that sort of range where they're like really good up to one and a half percent, and then they're weird for a little while, and then you take them up over two percent, and they're okay again. I don't know. How much do you use Oba? What's the max you've ever used Oba Oba? Because I'm four, playing, playing with it. Four percent probably the max I've ever taken it. Four percent's the max. <laughs> yeah, it gets really like. Um, what's the right word? I don't know. It just gets a little like, kind of sickly sweet when you take it over that high. Like, super okay. sweet. That's what I was. I started with a two, and I wasn't getting the nut because I really wanted to shine in what I was working on. And then I was thinking a four, so that's good to hear. With solid chai after last week's show. Jennifer said was, four two. Was it? Was I on the show? Because I haven't been on in two weeks. Solid chai show. I have a it's, few chai recipes. It's probably, yeah, your Thai chai. Uh, let me get on the ELR while you guys chat, and I'll see which ones I can do. Yeah, I got a couple of chai recipes on there. I have a masala. So it's supposed to be a orange Italian candy, if you're wondering what Oba Oba is supposed to be. And I, I had talked to... It's like a marshmallow uh, candy, yeah. Yeah, Sean Casey had told me about it. 
Now, what it what it kind of turns out to be is like a weak vanilla cream soda that maybe is flat with like orange notes. So it's like orange, vanilla, marshmallow are kind of your three profiles to it. But then uh, Head in the Clouds has talk, talked about that it has uh, an ability to create like a maltiness over time. So you can use it in weird ways uh, with tobaccos and stuff like that lower. But like Christopher's worked with it more than probably anybody I'd say because it's his favorite. I think I think Drivers has probably got a uh, claim to that because she picked up, she, I mean, the Oba Oba thing has been like a secret tobacco thing for juice makers for a long time. Like not really a secret, but you can like, because the citrus tones kind of don't really show up when you use them in a dry tobacco mix. So you just can, you can use it to like enhance the body of the tobacco and add like a really mild sweetness that helps keep counteract the counterplay against the dryness. You know, like of some tobaccos. So you can use it to get like more depth or more of a like a mouthful of smoke type sensation right because you get like that kind of nondescript marshmallow body this is marshmallowy to me and it's got a lot of like depth if you mix it with a little vienna cream like you can it's like a serious mouthfeel experience it's pretty cool stuff yeah i think my big problem not that i have a problem with oba oba but the one thing i do watch for with oba oba is it tends to kind of cut the sweetness level of the flavors that you're mixing underneath it, which can be a good or a bad thing. Like you kind of have to over flavor the rest of whatever you're trying to throw at it. So it has enough flavor to actually like deal with that texturizing. Oh uh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a definitely a very good point. I don't know why I forgot to mention it. I'm trying to find, I don't think I actually wrote down that the shisha punch recipe, but I'm pretty sure it was 3% TPA vanilla bean ice cream and 3% flavor Western vanilla bean ice cream. And like, 0.25% in a way she should punch and 2% flavor arts blood orange off the top of my head. That's probably pretty close to what it was. So Jennifer, yeah, you, oh, sorry, go for it, man. Uh, Jennifer is saying that it's the out, the outer coating of a European Smarties candy, which is like an M&M candy without chocolate. So that's, that's kind of what they were going for. And that's why I think it's so strange to us is because we've never tried that type of candy before. Uh, let's see. Uh, speaking of flavor art, I saw it come across one of the attendees at uh, the Canadian Vape Expo said they were showcasing 10, 10 new flavors slash one shot flavors. So it makes me think they're along the lines of the wow and the ones they release that are semi finished. Yeah, I saw uh, the I saw some of those broadcasts in it. Yeah, they had like testers out and stuff, so I'm pretty excited to hear about what those might be. Um, they had like people's names or something like that. I can't remember exactly. I'll see if I can find a picture of one line. A bunch of those folks are there right now, like uh, the squirrel lady. What's her name? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The squirrel Zippy. lady? Zippy. Yeah, Zippy. <laughs> Laura. So are you saying concrete? You're talking about something. Laura Strong right here it is. Let's see if I can catch the names of them. Oh, I was just going to say on that ice cream recipe with the shisha punch, I remember you drastically <laughs> overdripped that. So the actual recipe was something close to like 0.5% shisha punch. Oh, that's right. Yeah, good good, good call because I, I spaced that part. Um, and it was, it, it was really good fresh, but it got too strong later. So I would stick with the 0.25 and ride that out because it was super and duper good right off the, right off the gate, but then like Three days later, it was like, like blew my nose out, um, and I never followed up because I was on vacation. So, well, we've officially disgusted Adam, and he's left us. All right, here I'll just I'll I'll type it out for you in chat. So, I don't know, David Haney. We might we might do three o'clock. It just depends on the timeline, and then kind of where the views are at. You know, because no matter what, people end up watching it later, mostly. But if there's more live viewers earlier, you know, we all have different schedules. So, like, for Chris, this is the middle of the night for him, usually. So This is, like, bedtime for me right now. Like, I would normally be going to bed, like, within this, like, this general time frame. So the hope was that, because it's been difficult for me to participate every week and continually lose sleep um, when I'm working a 12- or 15-hour graveyard. 
and like tonight I work from 9 a.m. till or 9 p.m. until like 10:30 or 11, probably tomorrow. Um, so it's kind of tough. So I wanted to try and see. I think if we <coughs> advertise it a little more, and I think we'll do it. It seems like chat is about as busy as it normally is. I can't see the number of active viewers right now. 31. So I don't know. We're pretty close to normal. I think for our, for our usual. <clears throat> and we're only 20 minutes in, so it's hard to it's hard to gauge yet. We'll we'll keep an eye on it. But the hope is that we can move to a a time slot that works well for more people um, overall. But we'll obviously have to. Do a rotation, I'm sure. You if know, you guys want to get a ID10 Tia present, he loves Cadbury, so feel Cadbury free to feel free to send him that with his. If you send him Cadbury, Nick, so you have to send it with a dick pic. <laughs> he likes those. Why am I getting all these gifts that are? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you his PO box. Just hit me up. Uh -huh. We know things. <laughs> we know where you live, Dave. So I got the I got the new flavor West flavors, which oh yeah, I had those. I'll let you. They weren't announced, and I only found them because I was lurking the new releases for Bull City, and they seem to be the only one that have them so far. Uh, some of them just taste like uh, like they're really bad for you. Like the butter beer smells like the notes of vanilla custard one and like some of those like like the part of yellow cake that's bad for you. It smells like they've just made a concentrate called butter beer that's that. And uh but I could see a use for it. Like if you're doing a caramel and you want to make it real syrupy, like it's like a dirty syrup kind of flavor to it. Uh, I could see that being a nice additive for you. Their cakes are really good. Uh, some better than others. I think uh, there's there's a white, there's a wedding cake one that's really good. And then there's one called birthday cake, which I think I like the best of them. Uh, there's a strawberry milkshake, which I really like. It's real mellow, but it, it seems it's like a nice little shake and vape probably. Um, I'm trying to think what else sprinkles is just like doesn't really perform and then uh, concrete's been doing some testing on some of those uh, but sprinkles to me was just kind of like a weak flavor but there are some winners in there so if you're interested in finding some new flavors flavor west has a few I think it's like 10 10 flavors all together there's a malt one which is interesting and uh, I haven't I didn't get that one that was the only one I didn't get uh, but that might be something you can use in some certain ways. And uh, let me see if I can think of any other ones that stood out. Uh, yeah, I think I mostly got the K. Oh, there's one called uh, like Big Twist that's supposed to be like an orange cream sickle, but it just wasn't. It just didn't really have much to it. I like uh, the new uh, TFA orange cream better than that. So if you're working out, non or whatever. Yeah, the, 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 well, the new one they came out with uh, had the blood orange extract in it, or the old one didn't. So uh, it kind of save it saves you adding an extra flavor. Uh, but I, <laughs> I would recommend you try them if you like to pick up new flavors and stuff. Well, if people thinking. feel like uh, people feel like outsourcing, I'm currently going through all those with my flavor notes. So I put up a video on Friday with the sprinkles, the big stick, and uh, the star candy. Um, just decided to take out the uh, the short steeping ones first. Uh, I think you're dead on in sprinkles. It's weird. I think it's an accurate sprinkles flavor, but I'm not sure I want an accurate sprinkles flavor. Right. Um, <laughs> well, I kind of like the other day, like sprinkles don't really taste like anything, right? Yeah, it's kind of just light, dry, and chalky. It's like a really shitty version of marshmallow, um, more than anything else. And then the big stick, I, I think they base that on. Uh, see, it combines my two loves: ice cream and vaping. So Good Humor actually makes a uh, big stick popsicle, which is a cherry pineapple popsicle, and I think that's the one it's based on. Um, and it was Did you interesting. Like it? What'd you, yeah, what'd you think of that one? 
Well, like it wasn't obnoxious enough for me. I mean, first of all, you have the cherry notes and it has like all those weird medicinal cherry notes and stuff. It's not super bad, but it's definitely noticeable. Uh, but that pineapple base, like I felt like if anybody was going to go obnoxious enough with, uh, with that candy pineapple, it'd be flavor West, but it was kind of light, kind of dull. Um, I was hoping for something a lot brighter. It kind of was in a really weird middle ground where it wasn't realistic, but it wasn't syrupy and, and like obnoxious enough. Um, star candy so far, I've actually kind of liked, uh, not so much for the texture because it doesn't have that starburst texture, but it does kind of taste like just shoving a whole bunch of starburst in your mouth, uh, without actually chewing them, just kind of letting them melt in there. So I don't know what use it ends up having, but it tastes pretty good. Yeah, it seemed to be real tangy, like more tang than creaminess. Like you could probably you could probably pair it with uh, the jungle flavors, uh, pink pink burst or whatever it's called, and that might actually together might actually create a decent starburst. Vanilla base. swirl. That's all you need, man. Telling fucking you. vanilla swirl, man. <laughs> Dude, it's the thing. Like that's how you make the fucking starburst vape. Like every commercial starburst vape just uses an offensive amount of vanilla swirl. Right, they so, take vanilla swirl up to like four percent, and then they fucking put on like ten percent fruit or whatever, like one fruit, and that's it. Like there's your fucking starburst. Um, have you had any luck using food. vanilla bean gelato by TPA to kind of bring in some waxiness to something? Because I've seen that trick used a couple times, but I've never been able to pull it off. It can work, but I think that the shisha vanilla works better. Okay. Shisha vanilla has like a super wax, right? Like yeah, it's like wax so strong that it's boring on cardboard. How do you how do you use the shisha? Because I just got it got that in, but I've I haven't really played with it. Shisha vanilla, <clears throat> yeah, it's a really good vanilla, and the vanilla itself is kind of reminiscent of like, uh, um, <coughs> excuse me, like the vanilla in a vanilla coke, right? Not vanilla Pepsi, but vanilla coke. Like it's a really distinct vanilla, um, and then it's it's super duper waxy, right? Like it's got a really waxy finish, so like. I would use it like 1% in place of like 2 or 3% vanilla swirl to kind of get that body. Jen says, put your fucking vanilla swirl away, Copal. You don't know what you're talking about. That's what she, I don't know what she just said. I, can't, I can only read half of it. Shout Seven, out to I tacos know. and vanilla swirl. Do you hear Jen? Look how ludicrous she's being. Yeah, she's on, <laughs> she's on one. So, she's so hostile. Somebody needs to babysit for Jarvis for a day, please. So she <laughs> Mom and dad. <laughs> got angry mama syndrome going on today we love you Jen. i'm just teasing yeah but uh for what it's worth on monday i'm going to be going through the cake flavors at least doing a first test and then starting to bust into some of the more detailed reddit flavor reviews on them cool so, so i'm i'm excited i'm excited for you somebody's just asked in chat what recipes are we the most proud of You go first. Me? Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's probably my least. It's not my very. It's not my most popular one, but I think that fireside is probably my favorite recipe that I like that I vape the most often and I come back to the most often. Sakura sweets really put like with Wayne mentioning on the show and it getting a little more attention and put florals on the map. So it's kind of a toss up between Sakura sweets and fireside. I think Fireside's still my favorite, though, out of the two. Um, what's the link, right? Yeah. It's upon like, all the flavors. I, through, I right? like I uh, are open, so. the Lake Placid that you had done the majority of the development on. That was, like, just a really cool, cool vape for me. That was one that I made. <clears throat> that, you know, we kind of revised it together, but it was really your concept. I really liked that. Uh, well, I mean, it was a really yeah. fun concept, but it's hard to take credit because it's kind of a clone. Right? right, it's a clone, but it's still like to clone it out in a decent way. It just was a cool flavor profile that I had encountered. Yeah, I think class is really fun. I think it's like a gateway for like florals too, like because it's like the gateway to honeysuckle. Right, like it's a good way to use honeysuckle that makes it easy and approachable. So it's super fun. Yeah. It's funny, like the ones that the ones that were the work, most work for me ended up not even being popular. Like I, I put together a really good uh, chocolate chip cookie, 
and it just got slept on like no one even it didn't make a blip but for me it took a month to work on there was like eight or nine revisions of that i was just pissed off at chocolate chip cookies in general by the time i got done with it because i vaped so much of this and uh it's called toll house and then there's another one the cinnamon roll uh chefs picked it up called sin city but i just didn't <clears throat> it didn't sell as well as the others do but for me it was it was probably the most developed recipes so really for me the ones i end up liking the most are the ones that were the biggest pains in the ass basically and you kind of conquer the problem of the flavor profile uh you know for for dave his is always the the pina colada one that took him so long to make and I think that's kind of what happens is that when you hit it easy, it's you don't have to work for it. So you might love the actual vape, but it doesn't like resonate with you as much as taking a month and failing 20 times at it and then getting it. So it's kind of interesting, but all my tobaccos that I put out, I, I really am proud of those. Those are great. I just like being able to make a sweet, creamy tobacco. And then um, the ones that hit the mixer collection, the vape line that we're doing in Canada, those are all, I'm proud of those too. Cause those are kind of like, those are our, our, you know, our first chance to impact a regular vape person that's been vaping shitty products or, you know, subpar stuff for a very long time. And then this is our chance to make an impression. So those ones, I think we did a really good job the whole, the whole group of us, Jarvis, uh, Steam, Christopher, and myself, uh, for that line, you know, those are really like, those are really like our, our presentation art pieces, if you will, that we're getting out there to like convert people from what they're used to. So there's, there's kind of a statement behind that. And then those were kind of, uh, held up to scrutiny where people were voting on them behind the scenes and, having to fight for revisions or fight for our mix the way it was kind of back and forth. So those got really vetted. And at the end of the day, I'm proud of those too, because it was kind of like way different than just putting a recipe out. And then, you know, some people like it, some don't. We went through a whole critical review process with those. So it, it kind of like, it makes them feel a little more valuable in a certain way because they made it through the fire and, they're there so for me that's kind of the, the thing by the time they get to one shots they're they're pretty much like loved by me because i don't want to be putting out anything to a one shot that's okay so anyone that makes one shot level is usually one that's been obsessed about and worked on so much that you know because you're held to a higher standard it's not just like releasing a recipe but it's like that's your name on a bottle and you're trying to collect money for it, so it better be good, you know? And that's, for me, that's my views on them. Like, people like different things, though, too, because if you look at, um, you know, across the board, some people love certain ones, and then other people love other ones that we do, you know? And But, you know, Chris's butter cookies and his apple pie are both really popular, too. What about you, Rick? I see you unmuting over there. What you got? Yeah. Um, so in terms of recipes that I'm the most proud of, um, ends up being the stuff that I like the most, honestly. I absolutely love my Terrahawk recipe for grapefruit. Like, if you are even vaguely into the concept of a ruby red grapefruit vape, hit that up. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb and say it's pretty fucking good for what it is. Um, Fiestas and Fiascos, too, available on BCF with the flavor pack thing. Um, is an odd recipe but it's really satisfying uh it i like the way the, sort of the abstract concepts of flavor more than you know an actual profile like it's chewy and sweet and bitter all at the same time without sort of hanging it on like a concrete reference which i really enjoy but yeah i mean if i was gonna give two mixes that i'm proud of it's definitely terra hawk and fiestas and fiascos Here's a quick uh, screen share. We'll do this show off our, our line real fast. So here's the thing. Oh my God, I got like Inception. Right. 
Did you guys ever have that happen before where it just starts like showing inside of itself? Can you guys see that okay? Uh, let's see. All right, yes. so we, got, we got the blue IC here. So there's switching blue raspberry slush and a mango lassi, a mango yogurt smoothie, and the Woodsman, it's a spicy wood tobacco, or those are all three for Sea Chemists or Adam's line there. And then for Jarvis, we have the Hummingbird, just a sweet native tobacco, um, but it's pretty smooth, island breezy, jackfruit, pineapple, mango, banana, and blood orange, a little kind of crushed, crushed ice type finish, and a bright purple bubble gum. For myself, I've got a ambrosia salad with oranges, pineapples, cherries, and sweet candied almonds and walnuts. A little bit of apple and dark berries with a whipped cream base. It's a pretty fun, pretty fun recipe. That was probably took me the longest of any recipe ever to develop. It took forever. Uh, Cabana is a sweet and like bright mango cocktail with uh, spiced rum and a whipped cream finish. And Sakura, which is a play on my Sakura sweets, but it's not the same. So um, it's a little brighter, a little bolder. And for steam, we have the, the Donut Royale. It's a custard donut with butterscotch. It's pretty excellent. I think I, I tried that one before it went out. Uh, the Tropical Explosion with mango, papaya, and melons with the, and the yogurt base. And Tony's Revenge. So a lot of you are already familiar with that. It's been, I, I, as I understand it, it's been revised for commercial release. So it's not the same as his, his uh, recipe exactly. So there'll be some differences. Um, any of these that kind of coincide with some of our public releases are not uh, exactly the same. Uh, for the commercial release, so they are different, um, but they're all very good. So we're all pretty excited to see that. Oh, the background thing did this weird thing again. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll take so this creepy. If I move my head, then like it gets all blocked. You're a wizard. So that covers that. Which one was it? I didn't even see which background it was. The mix life. Oh yeah, nice, awesome. That's cool. That's cool. I see. I want to run it all the time, but like, I'll show you. It like moves around, or if I move around, like it looks good. But then if I like, this is some like weird, weird shit. If I, it's all crazy, so I don't go with it. <laughs> oh, hey, shout out to Shindo. He just—I uh, don't know if he actually released it, but he just put together a mango and sweet rice uh, blend that was pretty stellar. Uh, I had to do a revision because he used a flavor on coconut, and I am out. But it's pretty stellar, and I like sweet rice a lot, and I want to develop some. Recipe recipes with it, some one shots maybe even. It's it's amazing, it's glorious, and I want to make sure that we sell a ton of it, or the ECX sells a ton of it, so that I they don't pull an FE sweet green tea, and we have to like fight to keep it back. I do need a green screen, uh, but I don't have any money for a green screen, so that's not happening. Yet. <laughs> um, yeah, so ECX, if you're watching, I want to make one shots with your sweet rice, so that you sell a ton of it. And I have an infinite supply of it. You want to make one shots with their sweet rice? Yeah, dude. <laughs> that flavor stress sweet rice is delicious. And I want to make a ton of one shots with, with the whole line of them. Then uh, Jennifer has a rice pudding she did <clears throat> with That's that. Really I think I missed it. I want to do a it's mango sweet down. rice thing. Shindo just did a mango sweet rice with coconut. Did you? Cool. Shindo did it. Shindo, Shindo, Shindo. Shindo. Um, he did it, and it's delicious. Um, and then I instantaneously remixed it, and I made a banana jackfruit and pineapple one that turned out really, really well. And uh, I did another uh, Wanabana Cherimoya, like, soursop blend, like, just straight soursop. So two of the Flavora soursops, I used their Wanabana and soursop in, in a Wera's Cherimoya, and I think in a Wera's Cherries. Nice. It's got that like secret, I don't know, it's not secret, but it's got like that sort of like sweet body that really boosts with Wanabana like a ton. Oh, there's the rice pudding there's from Jennifer. Pudding. It's yeah, that's good. sweet. I've actually like, that was a dessert I had years ago. Is the They take this, it's a sweet sticky rice and they serve it with slices of mango. Oh, that looks good. So that's cool. Yeah, that looks really good. I'm going to, remind me later, I'm going to mix that. I actually have all that stuff too. Let me see. Yeah, I think I got all that stuff too. I know that's good just from the Bovoras in there. Those are all great. 
So in the last 20 minutes, uh, quick announcement. Mixed Life is hosting a singular uh, one versus one contest for Dave and Rick to have their rematch from the DIY or Die contest. DIY or Die contest last earlier this year. So uh, they'll be submitting their recipes to us this week with our singular anonymous person who doesn't care about the judges because we didn't uh, want to hassle Key 2 for a contest thingy or whatever. Well, I didn't want to hassle him for one, so it's me being lazy. Uh, so they'll be submitting their recipes to us tomorrow afternoon, and then we will judge them next Thursday. We'll do a special stream um, just to judge those and have a little goof-off time, and then the loser will have to vape something really horrible on our next Sunday show. And the winner, of course, will get to talk trash. I mean, not that they don't talk trash to each other endlessly anyways, but he'll have extra extra fuel, right? The more yeah. bullets for his trash-talking gun. Yeah, um, the thing that I want to do is not just win, but absolutely humble Heidi Denti and destroy this fake idol that you've made out of him, this golden god who can do no wrong and is always friendly. I want to oh, tear yeah. down... I want to tear down that edifice. I, I, I want to be like the uh, like the American soldiers tearing down that giant statue of um, Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Gulf War. Like my recipe is going to be like rolling a tank into into his shrine and pulling down a sixty foot statue of this motherfucker. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, this is the best. I love. I am going to grind him to dust. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm going to salt the earth on all that strawberry nonsense that he decides oh, to start putting out there. I love it. <laughs> so, you ready? Uh, it's going Tuesday, down. Uh, I don't know exactly what time, but we'll, it'll probably be like mid afternoon, 2 3 p.m. PST. Something like that. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a bloodbath, is what it's gonna be. You're gonna see your 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 hero dismembered. It's gonna be brutal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The cream always rises to the top. Just remember that the cream rises to the top. Uh, <laughs> you gotta get close to the mic here to make that. <laughs> the cream rises to the top. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. There's one Texan right standing for Dave. You're alone with one Texan, Dave. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. The cream rises to the top. The cream. It's on the top. Right there. <laughs> on balance, off balance, it doesn't matter. The cream rises to the top. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, this is glorious. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, guys. I, and I'm looking forward to see what your recipe's coming up with. So for those of you who don't know, they had a limitation of five flavorings. They have to use only Flavora flavorings, and that includes additives or anything else. If they want to use Flavora sweetness, is there a sweetener? They have to use sweetness. They cannot use TPA sweetener or Capella Super Sweet. No cheat mode. You got to work with the, sh the hardest, the fucking know most annoying flavors to work with in a, in a complex recipe. And you can't just send me florals and think it'll win, right? Well, and we're going to be win. taking... Um, we're going to be taking points off if you go easy mode and use tobaccos, right? We've agreed on that. <laughs> right, yeah. So if you use red burley and flu cured and some fucking native spice, native tobacco, and send it to me. But, I mean, it's not very creative, buddy. That's all right, though. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Try to see tropical fruits and tobaccos. That's where everybody's going with this. Flavora? Oh, tropical fruits and tobaccos. I want you to make yeah. me fucking... Okay. ID10 can't use mango. Oh shit! That's too far. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say, like, my entire goal is to hear the lamentations of his women, um, but <laughs> I, I will respect the fact that he's coming out with the no tropical fruits or tobaccos. We're, yeah. we're going the same way. <laughs> shit. That's great. No mango. That would be cheating. It would be cheating. <laughs> Those are the flavors that everybody likes best, Jennifer. That's, That's exactly. the point. That's the, thing. That's the whole point. Like, you use the flavors that everybody likes the best. I want you to make me something creative out of Flavora hibiscus, uh, persimmon spice, and fucking black cherry. Oh, persimmon and horchata. We're just gonna 
destroy your throat. <laughs> right. Oh, Flavora pear. How much I wanted to love Flavora pear. Oh, it's, it, it has good texture, but even at two months, it still kind of tastes like grass and vomit. It's And I get like, I get a nasty, I get some pretty brutal throat hit from it too. Yeah. Like, I, I, the texture is like unmatched. It's got like a perfect grainy pear texture, but the flavor is weird. It's weird. I'm just going for 3% before. brie cheese. <laughs> uh, I, is it your bet to vape uh, 5%? Uh, one-on-one cheese flavor. Yes, Dave is going to be vaping five percent one-on-one cheese flavor. Everybody, everybody will enjoy watching that. You'll you'll see how the mighty have fallen. I'm I'm stoked. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So Thursday afternoon, you guys want to just go with the three p.m. PST? That work for you? Yeah, I'm good with that. All right, let me double check my calendar. Oh, while I'm here. And we should probably check to see if Dave's good with that, though. Dave, that work for you for Thursday? Well, we're going to vote. We're going to judge him then. He doesn't have to be on the show for that. <laughs> no, because I'm going to need you to dress him down on camera. I'm going to need him to bask in my win. Well, if he can't defend himself, that's not bad either. Right? <laughs> what was he thinking? <laughs> Thursday. Okay, yeah, so Thursday show. Yeah, okay, I'm good for Thursday. I think. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'm, so th Thursday <laughs> battle ID ten T versus Concrete River, judged by Copel. Tune in, folks. He said Pacific time zone, so that would be that's four p.m. for him in Texas, right? You in mountain time? Maybe five. The mountain Maybe. time don't, The mountain time zone doesn't actually exist. It's a liberal lie, <laughs> right? So like. Idaho doesn't exist, which is okay with me, frankly. I'd like to make that clear that, that was not like I wasn't defending Idaho. You're from Idaho. Fuck you. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> that came out before Making I could stop. Friends it. all over the place, man. Uh, so 5 p.m. here. That's okay if you can't be on camera. As long as you're here on chat and you can participate, I'll be happy with that. And the vape of shame is next Sunday. We can the do the vape of shame next Sunday. Yes. Okay. Uh, hopefully, well, we'll see how the time slot works today. I think it's working out pretty well. We got a good amount of viewers. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, we'll talk about that after the show, though. So you're gonna add three percent TFA honey to the cheese? Uh, that's for the rematch of the rematch. Yeah. Uh, the rematch <laughs> of the rematch will be five percent pre cheese, five percent one on one cheese, and ten percent TPA honey. Nice. In and three percent flavora heat. All PG base. Hot no cheese, man. No VG. <laughs> it's going to be good. Jam Get out to Shasta Club Soda. Shasta Club Soda, son. It's good. Hit me up with that sponsorship money. Do it. Right. <laughs> You're like oh, a, jump, a jumpsuit of Shasta next time we see you <laughs> with the <a> hat. <laughs> I mean, fuck vape money. I'm trying to get generic soda money here. Generic soda. <laughs> The, the insane clown posse funded their albums on Fago soda. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can buy lots of tacos with that with that Shasta Club soda advertisement money. Shit, you can buy lots of tacos just with the money you save by buying Shasta and not good soda. Yeah, <laughs> it's all Club Soda, man. I I, I got to keep this palate in shape because it needs to be oh, sure. a finely tuned weapon to flay Dave alive. <laughs> Outstanding, outstanding. Well, I'm stoked. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. It's our, it'll be our first hosted uh, DIY contest for Mixed Life. Um, if it goes really well, we'll kind of gauge the community responses and see if uh, see if we're going to continue doing it. Sometimes it's kind of tough to pull off an extra show every week, so um, I don't know how consistent we'll be able to be with it. But if somebody wants to challenge the winner, we probably won't tell you no. Just saying. We'll just keep going until we've all lost and defeat. Right, until everybody's ashamed and everybody's yeah. vaped the cheese. Yeah, I've got uh, to vape the cheese. I've got four ounces of decaying hot dog that I can distribute. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of psychopath sent you that? <laughs> it only came in four ounces, and I really wanted some. It was like a dollar. Like I, just, I don't know. I was really tired. I was maybe kind of drunk at the time. So you're the psychopath that made sure you ended up with four ounces of hot dog. That's nice to know. 
I'm mean, probably the only one in the entire country that has four ounces of the can hot dog. <laughs> <clears throat> like Cuban sandwich baby. Well, Dave's got the pickle, right? So yeah, and flavor out roast beef, uh, salubrium toast. What yeah, kind of got... fucking Cuban sandwiches are you eating that they have roast beef on them? Because there's no other like good sliced deli meat juice. Like you need roast pork, man. Come no, on. I agree, but there's no there's no roast pork. There's boiled chicken and roast beef. Choices. Fucking flavor art probably has some kind of roast pork flavor. Well, they got the what'd you say the bacon? You've tried that, right? Chris? Oh god, I can't talk about the bacon. <laughs> Somebody... I want their bone marrow. Like I legitimately want their bone marrow flavor. I had it. I thought you wanted the people of flavor arts bone it, marrow. It I, like this... hot <laughs> I want Thank them. <laughs> I have the bone marrow. Uh, it's um, it's delicious in food, but I would not recommend bacon. Just as a disclaimer, I can't tell it is actually. Yeah, but you bought four ounces of decaying hot dogs, so I can't take your recommendations. Man. Right? <laughs> That's some questionable judgment. And I have four ounces of Flavor West capsicum. <laughs> oh, God. You think the Flavora heat is bad? Oh, Jesus. Right, 0.15% Flavor West capsicum. So just completely destroy your olfactory for a month. <laughs> Completely annihilated. I got so, yeah, I got a lot of weird stuff. You know, uh, some of them were sent to me as jokes, and some of them I bought just on a whim because I was already buying shit. And I was like, "Well, I want to get over that free shipping limit. What do I put in here? Fucking truffle." What is uh, the worst concentrate you've ever vaped? The Kang hot dog by far. <laughs> what it about is, you, concrete? The worst thing. Um. Oh shit! It probably has to be. You know, I would say the sriracha, but it I liked the sriracha. No, you liked that. You look you yeah. looked like <laughs> in pain I liked, and happy. <laughs> I liked that. The problem with the sriracha was that it wasn't like it's gunky as all shit, so it was burning on my coils. Like if it didn't burn on my coils, like I might even hit that back up. Um it's probably some garbage ass cherry flavor. That's probably my least favorite. I'm trying to think what the worst cherry I've tried is. Uh, the close second for me for the Kang hot dog would be flavor on crap. That was pretty terrible. You're nuts. Uh, T TPA pizza wasn't uh, as terrible as most people make it out. It's kind of like a stale those pizza combos, you know? With the little chip things or whatever. No, they're not chips, but you know what I'm talking about? Like the little like rounded out pretzel body with the nasty pizza cheese filling. Yeah. It's kind of what it tastes like. It's not the worst like thing the in the combos? world. Like the combos? Yeah. Yeah, exactly like those. But kind of stale, like you left them back open for a half a day before you ate one. I think the brie cheese, or I think it was Greek yogurt, and I was trying to early early vape it when I was working on a recipe, and it was just like uh, like blue cheese you dip a wing into. That was the worst, I think, because I had to like mentally hold it together for a second and just be like, ah, oh, it's just it's just blue cheese. It's not it's not a vape. The, the guys in England uh, just did a charity, and the way the charity works is you get, they give 10 pounds to charity if you vape this tester they send you, and it was pineapple pizza. So if you go over to the Chef's Flavors uh, group on Facebook, there's like 10 to 15 videos of people gagging, vaping this pineapple pizza concentrate they sent to vape. Along with a really excellent, like, week-long debate about why the fuck you shouldn't put pineapple on pizza. Right. That's... Right. Because you shouldn't. It's, in, it's inhuman and not natural. <laughs> if you do it, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. Well, uh, I just went off uh, and came hiding. You see, I started talking about pineapple pizza. He got offended. He couldn't handle it. Yeah, he got done. He said, fuck that. <laughs> he can't take it. He's not, he's not ready. Well, we have. You already hear first, gonna... folks. Uh, no pineapple on your pizza. If you want to watch the show, no pineapple on the pizza. It's okay, John. You're from Texas. I understand. <laughs> Sorry, this uh, John just said in chat that he can't support me anymore because I don't like pineapple on pizza. <laughs> Dave, this is for you. You Rick, gotta talk. talk. You gotta talk, Rick. <laughs> so not only am I gonna beat Dave, I'm also gonna embarrass him. It's gonna be brutal. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. I'm dying right now. Uh, 
<laughs> did you, you didn't even peel that orange, did you? you just yeah, he it just straight orange. fucking eating an orange with peel on it. Oh, all yeah. of all of the flavor is in the peel. Mm -hmm. That's 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 that, that's like a trick they don't teach you about citrus. <laughs> <laughs> You've now entered the weird zone. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> oh, that's the best thing ever. Well, the point is that I listen to the fans. Hey, this Rick. Can you, service. can you check out what that flavor is up top with the orange cap on your shelf? No, no, I can't. This is all you get. <laughs> Nobody needs to see from here down. It's all a mess. I mean, it's a mess from here on up, too, but it's even worse down there. <laughs> it scales. Oh god, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, the mix life mix life doesn't need alcohol to act insane. That's that's the entire point. I just wanted to do a testing of this orange. Fun fact, this is how all the flavor notes Concrete River makes are done. <laughs> it really enhances the flavor when you go shirtless. Do you like uh, waft the steam out of your armpits back into your face? Just. <laughs> I'm throwing orange juice everywhere. This was maybe poorly planned out. <laughs> I should have ate all the rind, babe. My stomach. Oh, <laughs> <man. Yeah. laughs> oh, lordy. Oh, that's good. That's good. So, you guys asked for it last week or two weeks ago? You wanted Rick eating an orange? And now you've got to ask for. They only oh. said shirtless. I want to clarify they only said shirtless. We're not going full nudity here. But you'll never know because he's not going to stand up, folks. We we know that Rick never wears pants when he comes on the show. Like I'm, I'm aware. Yeah, I never wear pants in general. Like nobody can ever see me from the waist down on video for a reason. Well, there you go, Shindo. You asked for it. We provide it. Are you entertained? <laughs> this isn't all that bad. The orange are you shirtless? <laughs> were you like, uh, did you have like, um, did you have a like, performance anxiety right, right before where you get that weird feeling in your gut? You're like, am oh, I about to make the worst mistake in my life right before you do it? Well, you know, I normally would, but I've made a lot of really, really bad mistakes in my life. So this isn't even like top five. A new YouTube video has emerged of con congressional candidate Rick Hedgie. Uh, from earlier days in his DIY years, uh, let's go now to this clip of him eating an orange. You're getting, uh, you're, we're coming up to the end of the show and you're getting a request here. She know what the close up of the juice running down your face. <laughs> oh, great. Shino's going to start sending wizard gear to Rick. He's getting all in there. <laughs> It's trying to burn a little bit. Is it supposed to burn? I think it's all the. Did you shave Nick? Nick, if that's a horrible idea to put citrus on a freshly shaved face. Yeah, I shaved like an hour before we went on the show. It's yeah, getting, it's gonna, it's getting it's a little gonna, brutal. It's gonna burn a bit tomorrow, dude. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're welcome, Nick. Well, Life fans. <laughs> check out there's new flavor shots on chefs, and ours are coming next week. Next week, I should have a Bull City Flavors Flavor Pack launch for Fireside, new tobacco recipe coming out. And we got a bunch of more new stuff coming in the weeks uh, to follow. So, <laughs> fuck me, we're hitting our hour. Thank you all for watching. It's been awesome. Thank you, Rick, for your nipples. I appreciate it. Uh, Adam, thanks for showing up. And Dave and Jen, thanks for running the chat and hanging out. Everybody, thank you for coming. It's been awesome. See you on Thursday for the judging of the 1v1.